What's up Savvy Expats? In today's video, we're breaking down income brackets to determine what's considered rich in the Philippines. So by the end of this video, you'll understand what's categorized as poor, middle class, and rich in this country. All right, without wasting time, let's get into it. First, we start off with Philippine income brackets and salaries. The average salary in the Philippines is around $500 per month or $6,000 annually. That said, salaries range from $200 per month on the low paying end and $4,000 per month on the high paying end. So you may ask, what do these jobs consist of? Well, in terms of the low paying jobs, this consists of blue collar work like a waiter, a cashier, a construction worker, you get the idea. But diving deeper into that, let's talk about the salaries of low paying jobs in the Philippines to give you a better understanding. First off, a construction worker in the Philippines makes $250 per month. It depends on the individual, but the average driver makes $260 per month. A cook also makes $260 per month. A plumber also makes $260 per month. A waiter makes around $300 per month. An electrician also makes $300 per month. A cashier makes around $350 per month. And a receptionist makes $385 per month. And so as you can see, as none of these jobs break the $500 per month, mark, this categorizes the low paying jobs in the Philippines. And also keep in mind that the average salary in the Philippines can just as well be $800 to $1,000 per month. Now let's move on to the middle class jobs of the Philippines. These salaries often comprise of office jobs in a professional environment requiring some sort of degree or education. First off, nurses roughly make $500 per month, some lower, some much higher. Firefighters and police officers generally make $500 per month. An architect roughly makes $600 per month. An accountant also makes $600 per month. A software engineer makes around $700 per month. A sales representative makes around $750 per month. A real estate agent almost makes around $1,000 per month. An IT manager makes around $1,050 per month. An aircraft pilot makes around $1,100 per month. And lastly, let's cover the highest paying jobs in the Philippines. A dentist makes $2,300 per month. An attorney makes $3,500 per month. A surgeon makes $5,000 per month. A judge makes $4,200 per month. And a lawyer makes $3,400 dollars per month. So now you have a basic understanding of the income brackets in the Philippines categorized by their economic class. From a Western perspective, you may be shocked by how low these salaries seem, but keep in mind that these salaries are exceptional relative to the country's cost of living. Of course, in the US, it would be hard to get by on the Philippine middle class salary. But in the Philippines, a little goes a long way. Now let's move on to the question you came here for. What's considered rich in the Philippines? Simply put, anything over $4,000 per month is categorized as rich in this country. So if you're making over $48,000 per year in your country, you come here to the Philippines and you're bawling. Because technically, you're living like lawyers, surgeons, and political officials. If you're making over $100,000 per year, forget about it. You're Elon Musk here. No, but in all seriousness, according to salaryexplorer.com, 95% of the people in the Philippines make less than $4,000 per month. So this is why you'd be classified as rich if you make this amount of money per month. Because to put it into perspective, if $2,000 per month is enough for an expat to get by in the Philippines, just imagine what $4,000 per month can do for a local here. But let me give you a clearer understanding about how income brackets are categorized here. We're categorizing this based off of five economic classes, and that is first, the poor class, second, the lower middle class, third, middle class, fourth, upper middle class, and fifth, rich. So what's considered poor in the Philippines? Anything below a $200 monthly income is considered poor in this country. Now as for the lower middle class, $400 to $850 monthly income falls into that bracket. Next, $800 to $1,500 monthly income is the middle class. And $1,500 to $2,500 monthly income is the upper middle class. Lastly, as I've mentioned, anything over $4,000 per month is what puts you in the rich or affluent class. By the way, these numbers are according to the Philippine Institute of Development Studies. And so by these numbers that we talked about, you should be able to determine where you lie in terms of your economic class here. While you may be 
be in the lower middle class in your country, chances are you're in the upper middle class in the Philippines. And so this is one of the main attraction points for many expats moving to the Philippines for the cost of living. On a budget that would barely allow you to get by in places like California or New York, you can live in some of the best cities that money can buy in the Philippines on that same budget. For example, though my family's expenses would be considered high by most locals here because we live in BGC, it's still much lower than our expenses in Chicago, and this was before inflation. And so this is something that you'll likely see when living in the Philippines. I'll tell you, if you're living in Chicago, New York, or California, your expenses will significantly decrease even if you're living in some of the highest end cities of the Philippines. Now I don't want to give you the idea that it's plain out cheap to live in these cities, but relative to the current US, it's much more affordable here. Not only that, but your lifestyle will change in numerous ways. For instance, one of my favorite hobbies is playing tennis, so at least once a week I'll meet up with my trainer and we'll play. In the US, tennis lessons are usually around $45 per hour or even more than that. But here in the Philippines, despite tennis courts being exclusive to mostly a higher social class, it only costs me 20 bucks per lesson. And you know what? That's for two hours of tennis lessons. Oh my god! Wow! So for half the price, that's including the court fee, the training, the games, and the ball boys. What we and countless other expats love about living in the Philippines is that the same budget that will offer you an okay lifestyle in the US will offer you a much nicer lifestyle in the Philippines. And aside from cost of living, numerous expats love the Philippines for the Philippines, not only just because it's affordable. For instance, at one of my tennis lessons, I met a foreigner from Denmark. Knowing Denmark is one of the most expensive countries to live in, I asked him if he moved here for the cost of living. He said no. I then asked him if he moved here for work. Yet again, he said no. And so here am I thinking that there are several studies that Denmark has not only the highest standard of living and quality of life, but it's also proven to be the happiest country on earth. And so a little confused, I asked him, well, why did you move here then? And he just plainly responded, I just like it here. But you know what guys, by the way he said it, it just seemed so genuine and from the bottom of his heart. He lived in the east coast of the US and the west coast of the US, to Thailand, to Vietnam, to Denmark, and yet he still chose the Philippines. And it wasn't because of the cost of living, it wasn't because of the work, it was just playing out because he loved the country. My point is, cost of living aside, the Philippines has a lot to offer, hence why foreigners are leaving some of the supposed best countries on earth for the Philippines. You won't believe how many emails I get of expats itching to leave the US. And mind you, from the east coast to the west coast, I get these emails of people that have high paying jobs, a wife, a family, a nice house, you name it. Back then, people would call you deranged to leave that kind of life behind in America. But nowadays, it doesn't seem too far from reality. So while this country isn't for everyone, if it is however the country for you, you will love it. Not to mention, the Philippines has grown tremendously in a short period of time and it will continue to grow economically. As some of you may know, the Philippines is one of the fastest growing economies in Asia. Believe it or not, the city that I live in, BGC, didn't even exist 25 years ago. This entire city with urbanized skyscrapers, high rises, condos, and international establishments was built in the span of only 20 years. And so it just goes to show where the Philippines is headed, economically speaking. In addition to that, Manila has gone through some massive transformation over the years. If you were living in places like Makati back in the early 2000s, you would see that it was pretty much the red light district. There was plenty of working women, girly bars, and drugs going on. But nowadays, places like Makati is completely cleaned up of all of that type of activity, and it's where the affluent reside. But going back to the question of what's considered rich in the Philippines, anything over over $4,000 per month would classify you as rich here. If there's expats that come here with $1,000 per month and $2,000 per month, you can only imagine what $4,000 per month can provide you in this country. Even if you're in the middle class range, $850 to $1,500 per month, generally that's on the lower end of the 
spectrum, at least for many expats. I generally recommend that you come here with at least $1,500 per month. Now, if you're willing to live frugally, $1,000 can cut it. But even at that, you don't want to push it too far down where you're just existing and not living. Then again, we all have different preferences for our lifestyle. Though many expats have done it, I wouldn't personally recommend it. That's what I'm saying. Now, if you fall in the upper middle class bracket, $1,500 to $2,500 per month, then that's much better. I wouldn't say that you'd be able to live like a king, but it will afford you a decent living in a small town. With that sort of budget, you'd likely be living in the province, just enjoying the simple things. You can shop at the local markets, cook your own meals, and live in a modest provincial home. But once you're up at $3,000 plus, then this is where you can afford a lot more flexibility. But at $4,000 per month as a single person or a couple, then you will not have to worry about your expenses. You can choose between living in the city or the province or even both. You can eat out however often you want. You can get massages, sign up for the gyms, and shop at the malls. Overall, your lifestyle improves drastically. But at the end of the day, guys, everyone has their own taste and you can personally adjust according to your budget. There's no budget that's the end all be all in the Philippines, but to explain the obvious, the more the better. And so there you have it, savvy expats. That's what's considered rich in the Philippines. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how much people earn here and how social class is categorized in this country. If you got any value out of this video, a like and subscribe would be appreciated. And so thank you for watching savvy expats and I'll see you in the next video. God bless.